I'm Paul, Apex Mindset. We're going to talk about retroactive jealousy. This is part four of a four-part series. And the first three parts, I dealt with defining re retroactive jealousy, which briefly, it's, it's having anxiety and feelings of disgust and being kind of overwhelmed with anxious feelings over your partner's past, okay, and sexual past. So I... um covered that at length and what the steps are for you to handle it on your own, the things that you need to do in order to handle your retroactive jealousy. Uh, I, I came across doing this, as I mentioned in some of the previous videos, because I was looking for solutions to this and seeing what was uh, trying to see what was out there and doing my research on this. And I couldn't find a good program or formula for handling retroactive jealousy, in my opinion. Okay. The stuff that I found, I felt was falling. It fell short in my opinion. Okay. So that's why I decided to do this series. I think a lot of guys need it. So retroactive jealousy is a primal drive. Okay. It was designed for, to protect men from pair bonding and trying to have children with the wrong woman. Okay. Cause back in our history, if you tried to mate with the wrong woman, you could find yourself getting cucked. You could find yourself taking care of somebody else's kids rather than your own. You could find your kids being abandoned or even killed in favor of another man or alpha in another tribe somewhere. So it, it was a big concern to, to match up with the wrong woman. And it still is today. You match up with the wrong woman today, you get divorce raped, right? If you do the marriage thing, or you go through, you know, a lot of heartache, a lot of pain and a lot of problems, and it can disrupt your whole life. It can take away from every aspect of your life. When you have a, a, a woman in your life that you're putting time and energy into that isn't worth it, <laughs> or even women, plural, it, it's in their bringing toxicity and problems into your, into your life through the relationship it's not good. How are you going to succeed and do well and, you know, take care be on your own mental point of origin and chase excellence when you have this anchor, which is this person, right? That is a toxic force in your life. So it's a real problem. And past behavior is a good indicator of future um, results too in behavior, right? So understanding her past is important. All right. But having retroactive jealousy where you have, uh, you know, endless amount of kind of an OCD or anxiety over it, where you're constantly ruminating over, you know, her experiences and constantly questioning your status in the relationship, that's not healthy and that's not good. So anyway, that's what caused me to do these, the, the series is just that it's a real big problem in the global sexual marketplace our jealousy drives are on overdrive, just like a woman's hypergamy is on overdrive. Okay. We are not genetically designed yet to handle the amount of sexual partners and opportunity that a woman has today. All right. It's more than any time ever in history, and we're just not quite adapted to it. So our, that jealousy drive that we have that was designed to protect us can get kicked into overdrive really easily and put us in a really bad place and affect our ability to have good relationships with women who might be worth it, you know, might be a good matches. And we end up, you could end up ruining a good thing over these feelings, right? Which isn't good. So yes, I went over all of these steps in the previous videos. Okay. Prior to commitment, you know, we'll just go over them real quick. I'm not going to go over them in detail. But prior to commitment, you know, you need to determine that you're her sexual best and that she has ability, she can pair bond with you. She has the ability to pair bond. So you don't give your commitment away with any woman unless those two things are satisfied. You want to be learning about her past and her experiences through non judgmental discussions. That's part of that vetting process. And you want to execute total sexual dominance. So you are re imprinting her from and, and effectively erasing attraction triggers to other men and other experiences. Okay. So once in the commitment, now, of course, if you are in the commitment already, you got to do these first three things <clears throat> at, at any rate. Okay. 
Now, once you're in the commitment and you still have these, you know, you have these feelings of retroactive jealousy, you got to recognize number one, that it's your problem to solve. And number two, you have to be resolved to end the relationship. If one of these three things for the before the before the commitment steps aren't satisfied. So if you find out later, she can't pair bond or you're not her sexual best or that you, there's no way for you to execute, um, you know, a complete re imprinting through sexual dominance, right. Then you need to exit that relationship. All right. Knowing that you would do that is going to help you handle mentally these, it, these feelings of uh, retroactive jealousy. Okay, recognizing that her past is 100% her fault. She basically created a problem for you to solve is important, all right? So you're not, you know, you need to put blame where it, where it lies, but at the same time, you know, you need to forgive her. Even if she's not sorry, even if she doesn't care, you have to forgive her for it, all right? You have to forgive her for the things that she's done before she met you, all right? The way that she treated herself and all that stuff, you know, you have to be able to forgive her. All right. So if you can't forgive her and accept the past, then you're just not going to have a good future. That's just the way it is. All right. Set your boundaries. Don't accept shaming, testing, or games around your jealousy. All right. Most of you guys, if you have retroactive jealousy, probably beat your partner up a little bit over her past or maybe a lot bit. Okay. Make your amends. Okay. Correct the problem and then forgive yourself and move on. If you're beating yourself up for the things you've done wrong constantly, that's not going to help. It's not going to help her, not going to help you. All right. Minimize the impact that your jealousy has on the relationship. It is not her job to solve your anxiety or solve your problem, even though she created the problem. Okay. Really? So you're not going to get her to, she's not going to do anything or say any kind of magic words that's going to make things better. All right. The more details you dig for, okay, the, to try to, to cure your anxiety, the worse things often get. So don't talk about it anymore. Don't bring it up. You know, if something crops up happens and that anxiety crops up, don't dump it and puke it all over her. Okay. You got to handle this on your own. All right. And I, the only exception would be things that are deal breakers. So if you come across some information or something happens that is way different than what you thought or realized, um, then you're going to want to, you know, maybe address that. But other than that, you know, stop talking about it. Stop bringing it up. This is something for you to handle now, because the more you bring it up, then I just explained before, the more insecure you're going to seem and the more the, the more problems you're going to create in that relationship. And then step eight is meditate on forgiveness, acceptance, and talk to others you trust and respect. All right. And if you've satisfied all of these steps, most people won't need any kind of professional guidance or help. Most people, the retroactive jealousy will just sort of get less and less and eventually go away. Okay. But if you find that <clears throat> it's not going away, if you find that you know, you still keep circling back to it and you really want to get rid of it once and for all, then you got to book a consultation with me or possibly another professional that deals with this. Okay. I don't know of any, all right. I'm sure there are, um, there are some good counselors out there, but you know, I don't know who follows this formula and does it the right way. Okay. Now with professional guidance, what I do with clients, all right. I have you track your anxiety, the frequency, the thoughts, the emotion, beliefs, and the severity of it, okay? So if you're having these anxious and bad retroactive jealousy thoughts, almost like OCD, you're going to start tracking them. When you track it, it, what it does is it makes you aware of the problem, makes you aware of how often this is happening. And when you're aware of it, it puts it in your, you know, your level of conscious awareness it allows you to start reducing your, your mind will start reducing these events for you already. Okay. Um, but that's, so that's, I start somebody off with that. We also, as you're logging and tracking the anxiety, the, the thoughts you're having, the emotions, the beliefs behind them and the frequency of all these things and, and the severity of it, we circle back and we go back through your thoughts, beliefs, and emotions. 
oftentimes you're saddled with limiting beliefs and we got to challenge those. Okay. You have limiting beliefs about yourself, about your partner, about the relationship. We have to challenge that stuff on a logical level, things like hypnotherapy and transforming your unconscious mind often won't work if your belief system is shot, right? If your belief system is wrong and not suiting you, I can't do some other kind of, you know, some kind of other meditation or affirmations or hypnotherapy. None of this stuff is really going to take if you don't logically have the, have a correct belief system in place. So in consultation session, Oftentimes, if a guy is not over the rec directive jealousy from doing the previous steps mentioned, it's because, you know, he's got this anxiety and there's probably some limiting beliefs that are there. Some things that are that you, you might not even realize until you start tracking it and addressing it in session with me, that you have these thoughts and beliefs that you just just the way you're thinking about it is putting you in this anxious place. And there's different ways of framing and thinking about it. So you're not going to see things quite the same way. Okay. So number three is reduce anxiety, frequency and severity through reframing and time limits. So this is an activity that I'll have you do when the anxiety comes up. Now that you understand the frequency of it, now you'll put a time limit on allowing yourself to feel that way. And then you'll get, go back to what you were doing your, or you'll break the pattern and do something else. And also for, through challenging the limiting beliefs in a session, when these Anxious, anxious feelings come up, it allows you to use what we've talked about in a session to challenge that belief and then to, you know, be able to move forward from it. See, a lot of your behaviors are habitual. So if you're getting this repeat OCD, you know, kind of obsessive compulsive anxiety over your partner's past and over, you know, different things that you might be concerned about or insecure about even, you're practicing that pattern. So you're building a pattern of doing this. So we have to break the pattern and build new patterns. All right. So a lot of behaviors, thoughts, and emotions are built in, in with patterns. And so the first three steps here are designed to break and to recondition new patterns. Okay. Number four, reprogram distress through EMDR. So EMDR is a processing technique. Uh, that is used to help you overcome trauma or things that you are having trouble accepting is really what it boils down to. So you're putting, you're storing information in one part of your brain that signals danger, trauma, or something bad. And then you're reacting to those things to the outside world in a way that's not suiting you, not way that's not good for you. Okay. So you're seeing her past and her behaviors as a danger to you and to your relationship. And you're not in a place where you want to accept it. You're it's actually literally in a part of your brain. It's literally in a spot in your brain that says not to accept this and, and, and be okay with it, but to be basically fearful or angry or frustrated about it. And, and so you just kind of keep repeating that um, pattern because of where you've actually stored the information in your brain. So EMDR, what happens is we reprocess that information and it allows you to store it in a different part of your brain, okay? Using uh, bilateral uh, stimulation of both hemispheres of the brain. Um, so we, we use eye movement and visualization exercise in session to be able to do this. It's quite cool, actually. Uh, then number five, okay, evaluate alpha evidence. So apex alpha evidence. So, you know, I'll have you circle back to the evidence that you have objective evidence that demonstrates that you are in fact her best. So what happens is when you have all of these anxious thoughts and feelings and this retroactive jealousy comes up, a lot of times in that moment, you're not feeling like you're good enough for your partner, essentially you're not feeling like you're her apex alpha. You're feeling like that other experience is a better experience than anything you've provided for her or that other guys that she's had are better than you. And so when you, when you can go back, you, you want to challenge those thoughts when they come up. See, beating this is sometimes is like hitting it. You have to hit it with a hammer till it's dead. Okay. Cause we're dealing with an instinct. 
And so we're going to have to bash this thing with a hammer and redirect that instinct a little bit. Okay. Or else it won't go away. All right. That's just why we, so we have to tack, we have to tack it from a number of different fronts and just keep on smashing it until it's gone. All right. And so part of that, again, is you, you might have to, maybe those first text messages that you've had in the beginning of the relationship, for example, where she really was showing a lot of genuine desire right away. For example, stuff like that, things that are evidence that you're her apex, you may have screenshots, you may have a journal with it, and you may, you, you're going to be circling back to that information a lot, okay? Um, number six is in session, we'll, we'll do um, visualization techniques, hypnotherapy, guided meditation. I have something called impact affirmations, different techniques that will build in your unconscious mind and in your emotional centers a sense of empathy towards her, also emotional self-control with yourself when these feelings happen and build that strong sense of that alpha self, okay? So tapping into the alpha male that you are on the inside and we're going to bring that stuff out through these different techniques in a session. And then inner game reconstruction, which is all right, so say through psychoanalytics and re, you're going to reframe yourself, basically. Okay, you may have limiting thoughts and beliefs about yourself. And we're going to do, we need to build up your seductive powers in the relationship through your inner game. All right, so there's, there's outer game, meaning handling the actual, you know, the, the actual communication techniques with the woman. And then there's your inner game, which is how your thoughts and feelings and emotions are on the inside of you, your, your internal frame. And so we're going to reconstruct and build that. Okay. We're going to build you into a new you essentially in session. So these are the things, cause all right. So back to number seven though, if you build up yourself and you're, you, you really uh, embody that dominant alpha person that you are on the inside, then thoughts and, and, and concerns about her past are, are greatly diminished or minimized. You do that in conjunction with reprocessing that information in your brain and taking care of limiting beliefs, you know, it, your emotions and thoughts and beliefs will change about her past and about how you see her. Okay. And you just won't have those feelings anymore. They just won't crop up anymore. Okay. And it, it, it doesn't happen immediately. It takes usually a few sessions to get there, but under guidance, these are the steps that we generally will take. Okay. To try to crush this and get rid of it. So that pretty much sums up everything. All right. Watch the first three videos and do the first, you know, three steps before the commitment and eight steps once in a commitment, if you're already in the commitment, whatever. And this should get rid of this retroactive jealousy thing for good. You should be fine. However, if you're not fine, then shoot me an email. Okay. Email will be in the description of the video and we can schedule a session and we can work through it and you use these other techniques to get rid of it for good. You just don't want to be saddled with anxiety of your girl's past in a relationship. You just don't want to be saddled with that period. You can't really be that alpha dominant guy holding frame in a relationship if you're constantly circling back to her past and having anxiety over it. You know, it's just not something that you're going to be able to do. All right. And yeah, it may happen occasionally, right? It can happen to anybody occasionally. However, come back here, look at my face when I talk. But yeah, it can happen occasionally still even, you know, but, but it's, we're, we're talking when new things crop up, maybe, maybe once or twice a year kind of event, that's about where you should be at with this. You shouldn't have to deal with this retroactive jealousy any more than that. If you are, then there's a problem that needs to be fixed, right? That problem is with you and your alpha frame and the way that your brain is sort of processing this information. Okay. So, and, and holding on to this information, the way that you're behaviorally responding to your environment, we need to change those things fundamentally, which 
you know, that's why we call the channel Apex Mindset because we're dealing with this up here and your behaviors so you can show up and be that more alpha guy, okay? Be that apex alpha in your circles and your social circles and, you know, with your chick, right? So hopefully you guys enjoyed the series. Uh, again, if, you, if you're struggling, if you need help, shoot me an email and we'll see what we can do about a consultation. And um, thanks again for the support. Take care.